So what we're going to do now uh, is go over some of the data sources that are available. Where can this data be found? Where can you access this data and download it? Um, and I'm showing the map here of the US because a lot of this data is housed in what are called DACs, Distributed Active Archive Centers. And this is data that is done by US agencies. So NASA, the United States Geological Survey, uh, there's a lot of different agencies that collect this data and they put it in different places. That does not mean that the data is only from the United States. Okay, they have global data, but the places to access them are through these uh, data centers in the United States. So looking around at the different data centers, there's about five of them that really apply for us in terms of land cover and land use. Okay, one of them is the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. This is very close to where I live and work. Um, and this has biogeochemical dynamics, ecological data, and environmental processes. So that kind of sounds like some of the stuff we're doing, right? We have the land processes DAC. This, must be, this might be the biggest one. This is where you're going to find a lot of your land cover data. Uh, land cover, surface reflectance, radiance, temperature, topography, that's the DEM that we were talking about, the digital elevation model, and vegetation indices. Okay, that's called the LP DAC. Then we have one of my favorites, the Socioeconomic Data and Application Center, or SEDAC. This has a lot of really cool social environmental variables, things like population density, uh, agriculture, people in agricultural jobs. Really, what it's more focused on people than it is on the environment. But a lot of times we need that data, right? We, we don't only want to know how much forest there are, we want to know how many uh, tribal populations there are using the forest products. And that sort of information we might find here in this SIDAC. Okay, so this is one of my, this has some really cool, interesting data sets. And then there's another one here, maybe not quite as applicable to us here in Africa, the National Snow and Ice Data Center, unless we're in Moshi or Arusha, uh, and we're looking at Kilimanjaro, but this has frozen, frozen, frozen ground, glaciers, uh, and, and things related to ice. And for those of us who are working in the coasts, or in the ocean, we also have an ocean DAC that's primarily related to ocean data. Okay, so we'll look at a few of these, We'll look at the types of data that can, be, that can be accessed, and we'll also look at some other ones that are not from the USA, and that are more focused on Africa, and maybe some of the, the study sites that you guys are interested in. So the DACs, as I said, they're digital active archive centers. Um, the advantages to using these is that you have all of this data in one location. So instead of trying to figure out where the MODIS is, and where the Landsat is, and where the other classifications are and the vegetation data, it's all in one spot. So you just go to one website and you search for what you want and it comes up. So it's all available in one location. You have a lot of different options to choose from. It's easy, relatively easy to search. You can search spatially and temporally. So you can look for Rwanda in 2000. You can look for Tanzania in 1995. Okay, and it'll give you all the data sets for that place at that time. Automated processing. So if your computer can't process these large data sets, they'll do it for you. Okay, you give it the location that you want, and it processes the data and gives it to you already done. Okay, so this is a really big advantage. It takes some time, so sometimes you can wait a day or two or three for your data to be processed but meanwhile you're doing something else you're not you don't have to use your computer to do it and then you just download the small data that you need for your site so you don't have to download a huge global data and if you're in the field site where you don't have internet it's impossible to do so you can do it somewhere else get your small data set take it with you into the field and do some calculations there question <laughs> uh, I wanted to know, when you download these uh, data, do you part away with a certain fee or is free data? That is this is all free data. All right. 
And all the data that we're going to present to you is free, open access data, public domain. Okay? So these are the DACs. So let's look at the first one. And I think I'm going to pull it up here. This is the NASA DAC. So this is the NASA uh, Search Center. So this has a lot of different data. This is like probably the most comprehensive data center, which makes it good because there's a lot of data, but it can also make it maybe difficult sometimes to navigate because there's so much it can maybe be a little overwhelming. All right, so one of the things we have over here, the things we have over here are our terms. So we can filter the data by a lot of different terms. So for instance, we know we want Landsat data. That's a platform. So if we go down to platform, here we find our Landsat programs. We only have five and seven. So it's missing one, two, three, four, and eight. For whatever reason, they don't have those, and six. For whatever reason, they don't have those available here. Okay, I'm not sure why, but it's, this is one place where you may not be able to get those earlier data sets. But maybe we'll find them in a different uh, data center. Question? Is it available by location? Yes. So if I use VPN? Um, it should be fine. I mean, I'm doing it here, so it should be fine. How you mean, does it look for where you are? Yes. No, you, you, will, you will tell it where to, where to search for the data. So, here's the Landsat. You have a lot of different satellites. Okay, a lot of these we didn't go over. But you can, look, you can look up the information a little bit more if you want. Instruments. This is where MODIS is going to be, I believe, because MODIS is an instrument. So here you can find your MODIS data. Remember, this is a level four product, I believe. So it's already classified data. Although for MODIS it might be different. I'm, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll take a look. We can do it by organization. Okay, so if we want the LPDAC, remember the Land Process Distributed Active Dis Distribution Center? That's here. If we want the SEDAC, the Social Ecological, Socioeconomic Data and Application Center, we can find that here. Okay, so that's program. Organization, sorry. Specific projects. There's a lot. If you know you want a very specific project, Safari is from Africa. It has vegetation ind indices from Africa. So if you know you want that, you can specifically call that. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, let's see if we can get MODIS data for Rwanda. So we're going to click MODIS. And it's going to tell us what's available. So it just changed, and it's giving us all the modus. But this is everywhere. We haven't indicated where we want it from, and we haven't indicated when we want it from. OK, so there's a lot of data here. We need to be a little bit more specific. So we can find Rwanda. And if we click a little area, we click this polygon tool, we can select the area that we're interested in. So let's say we want this little area here. We have to click on the first area to close it so it knows that you're done. So we click on the first one, and now it's going to search only the data sets that overlap with this area. So here we have modus aqua aerosols. This is uh, atmospheric pollution, aerosol data. 
Uh, here's the vegetation in this. This is the NDVI. This is a really popular data set for calculating changes in vegetation. This is from 2000. Uh, to the March, uh, sorry, February 2000 to the present. So we can search this. It's going to show us where the data is. So we have one large data set that's here and we have one large data set that's here and it shows you what it looks like there. If I click this one, see how the color changes in the bottom? When I put the pointer over it, see how it's changing? Whoops, sorry, I clicked it. So see this one's blue because I was here. If I move here, this one other this other one turns blue. So I know which tile it's on. Okay, we call these tiles. This is a modus tile. Okay. We can also see down here the description. Okay, so we can get some information from the description. This is modus. Um, this is the version number, this is the date. 2019, I believe this, it's Julian Day. oh, it's, so it's the 248th day of the year. Okay, so this is pretty close to where we are now. I don't, I'm not sure which day we're on now, but it should be pretty close to that. So this is a very recent data for our study area, for the vegetation index. So let's say we want that. I don't know what's going on with the map. It keeps zooming out, but let's say we want this. We click the download single granule data. And nothing happens. <laughs> Oh, I think I have to log in. Sorry. So before you do this, you have to log in. You don't have to pass any inspection or anything. They just want to know who you are, where you're coming from. So it should recognize me, because I've done this before. There we go. And we go back. But the first time you do that, you'll have to sh register. It doesn't matter what you put in there. They're not going to reject you. Again, they just want to have numbers to know how many people are using the data. And they'll also use your email to tell you when your data is ready. So I click the the image there that I wanted and it's oh that's just the this just shows you the thumbnail the smaller version of the image just to show you what it looks like but this is not the actual data this is just kind of a smaller version so you know what it looks like to get the data I'm still not sure why it's not letting me Yeah, I did that. So here I can download all, but I don't, I don't want to do that. So maybe I have to just first specify some dates. So let's say we want the most recent. So I'm going from September of this year first to today. Uh, we can also specify the time.
Zero. Why did it say zero? It said the other one. There's no data for today. Um, so maybe this, I have to go a little bit further back here. Okay, so here's eight that are available from July until today. And it has the newest first. So the, the re most recent one is from August 13th. Then I can click the download button and it's going to start the download. Okay, but it's going to take a long time. So I'm not going to do that now, but that's how you would do it. Okay, and you would get just this box. Rwanda, unfortunately, looks like it's on it in two what they call granules or tiles. So to get all of Rwanda, you would need both of these. Okay, but in the other sites, we'll show you actually how you can just, it'll actually process both of them and put them together for you and give it all to you in, in one file. Okay, so this is just one way of accessing the data. But there's going to be other uh, websites that we can use that will do some more processing automatically for you. So I canceled that just because we don't need that data. I just wanted to show you how you would do it. Okay, but that was going to give me this whole data set for August 13th. So almost five weeks ago, we can have vegetation data from five weeks ago. Okay, so this is one of the great things about MODIS is it's very quick turnaround. I think the same area is surveyed every two weeks. They just haven't released the most recent data yet because it hasn't gone through the processing. Okay? So you can, you can, using MODIS, you can calculate changes really well because it flies over the same area, I think every two weeks, something like that. Yeah. No? There's Terra and Aqua. So there's the same sensor and two satellites. Okay. So I think they're able to cover a week. Every week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's daily and they do composites. So Amelie was saying there's two satellites. There's Aqua and Terra, and they uh, actually, I think she's right. I think they do it every week. No, no, no. no. Okay. Otis covers every place on the in the non-polar parts of the Earth every day. Okay. And then what what we generally use? See how this says 16 day. Oh, 16 day. There it's you a go. 16 day composite. Okay. Because especially because with cloud cover. With vegetation in the seas, imagine for you know, montane areas in the tropics, for example, you can very often have 10 days out of 12 being clouded. And so instead of using individual days, you say in this 16 day period or in this seven day period or in this month period, I'm going to neglect any vegetation change and I just want the highest single value from any day. And that, you know, that greenest value is going to be the one with the least cloud cover. Okay. And, but there are two satellites. Yes. Okay. With the same sensor on them. Okay. So do we hear that? There's two satellites with the same sensor. They're covering the whole planet every day. But this is a 16-day composite, meaning they're taking the highest vegetation value over the whole 16 days. And that's because a lot of times, especially, in, for instance, in the Congo, you have cloud cover. And they can't measure a vegetation index if there's a cloud cover. So over 16 days, they hope to find one day without cloud cover, and they'll give you that. Or if they have multiple days without cloud cover, they'll give you the highest value that they recorded. And there are other data layers that, that speak to how much cloud contamination Right. So this is an L3. So this has already gone through this processing of cloud removal and atmospheric corrections and, and geographic corrections. Okay, you see here L3. Here's the resolution, 250 meters. Okay, so not great, but not horrible either. Okay. 
So this is one way you would, you would get this data, through NASA, okay? There's, we can go back, search some other data. I'm gonna uncheck MODIS so we don't get that in the results next time. I'm gonna see what social ecologic or socioeconomic data we have. And it's probably gonna be maybe population, cyclone hazard. Okay, so what is that what is the frequency of cyclone disturbance in the area? Drought hazard. This is global. So this isn't specific for and this is a product that's you know, heavily processed and again, due to those sort of calculation errors and biases that might be inherent in some of the, the calculations and processing that they do. So you have to be aware of that. So this is just one site. This is just a NASA site. Okay, but there's a, there's a lot more that I want to show you. So that was NASA. Now looking at specific centers, we go to the LP DAC and we get the what's called the appears. Okay, the application for extracting and exploring analysis ready samples. So what's great about this one is that you can specifically say which points you want or which polygon you want and it will extract the data that you want and process it and send you an email when it's ready and you can download it. So let's try that. Again, for this one, you'll have to sign in. You'll have to register and sign in, but it's the same deal. Uh, they just want to know how many people are using it, using the service. So when we get to this page, you see how it has data from a lot of different institutions. NASA, USGS, the ORNL DAC that we were looking at earlier and the LP DAC. Also the, the SEDAC, the socioeconomic data as well. So we can get point samples or we can get area samples. So if we have a file of coordinates for our study sites and we want to extract which land cover or which vegetation index is at each of those sites, we can do the points, point samples or we can do area samples. So, because area, I like to do area samples because then you can download those and you can process the whole area however you want. But you guys might just want to do the points. Okay, and the process is basically the same. 